In this video, we're going to look at a proof of Heron's formula. And remember, that tells us that we can use the semi-perimeter, amazingly, in my opinion, to find the area of a triangle. So remember that semi-perimeter is just a half per perimeter. You add up all the sides, divide by two, that's a semi-perimeter. And what Heron discovered is that the area of a triangle, A, is the square root of the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus one of the side, then the other, then the other after that. Multiply all these things, take the square root, and that will be your area. Isn't that fantastic? Now this, this proof is beautiful, and I hope you really enjoy it. What we're going to do is go through it. We're going to pause the time so you can think about it and try to predict the next steps and then test your reasoning, and I'll also show the work the, that goes in between each step. But write these things down and your annotations for yourself should really help you understand how we, how we go from step to step. So here's the first step, and this is somewhat arbitrary in the sense that there are many ways to get at Heron's formula. But if we start with this formula, this is the area of a triangle, right? If, if we're looking for the area of a triangle, we can do 1 half base times height or 1 half AB sine C. Now, Thinking about the goal here, notice that our formula has a square root in it, right? So in order to get a square root, what you might do first is what? What might you do to both sides of this equation so that you can start to incorporate a square root? Before you do that, you might try squaring both sides. So pause the video, try this out, square the right side, and then pre press play when you're ready, and we'll do it together. All right, so if you square that right-hand side, you square one half, square a, square b, square sine of c, and you get 1 fourth, that's a half times a half, a squared, b squared, and sine squared c. Okay, now, pause the video again. How can we rewrite the sine squared of c? What can we do? What do we know about trig? Think of your identities. Go ahead, pause it, and try it, and then press play, and we'll solve it together. All right, so here, let me show you um, the sine squared of c plus the cosine squared of c equals 1. This is our Pythagorean identity, and if we subtract cosine squared c on both sides, what's going to happen? We get that the sine squared of c is 1 minus the cosine squared of c. So we can use that. So instead of writing this, we can write this. Wow. Now here we go again. Believe it or not, we're pausing again. What can you do with 1 minus the cosine squared of c? What do you know about, I'll give you a hint, factoring in algebra with a binomial like that? All right, press play when you're ready, and then we'll solve it together. Okay, so we've got 1 minus the cosine squared of c. Now, before we factor this, we have to recognize something, I think. We have to recognize that this is called the difference of squares, right, of two squares, two perfect squares, I'll say. I'll just say different squares, shorten that up a little bit. All right, what is going on there? Well, the difference of two squares is something you can factor quickly. If you remember, if you have, let's say, a squared minus b squared, it turns out that this is also the difference of two perfect squares, or two squares, a squared and b squared, and I'm and what we do is factor to the difference of the square roots. So the square root of a squared is a, square root of b squared is b, and we subtract them, and multiply that difference by the sum of the square roots, a plus b. So here we can apply that. 1 is a square, right? Take the square root of 1. Okay, square root of cosine squared c is the cosine of c. So we subtract them, and you could add them first if you want, right? This is commutative. You can reverse it times 1 plus the cosine of c. And before we go any further, let's just make sure we're convinced that it does factor this way. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times the cosine of c is the cosine of c. And then negative cosine of c times 1 is negative cosine of c. And then negative times the positive cosine of c is the positive cosine, oops, not the positive, the negative the negative cosine, right, negative cosine squared of c. And here, these two terms cancel, they're opposite. 
and what's left over? 1 minus the cosine squared of c. So this works, and you can test this here as well. So this becomes this. Wow. Now we're really getting somewhere. Pause it. Can you go further? What can you do next? So how can we rewrite the cosine of c? What can we do? Well, remember this. With the law of cosine, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. Well, there's a cosine of c. If we get it by itself, we can rewrite it. So let's do that. Let's subtract a squared on both sides. I'm going to say that step. I'm going to subtract a squared. So c squared minus a squared, subtract b squared, and then divide by negative 2ab. And that's going to equal the cosine of c. And here, this little negative sign, I'm going to kind of factor it out. I'm going to bring it up here. We can do that. That negative sign can be put up top, bottom, or in the front of the fraction. And then, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it up top. And when I put it up top, I'm essentially factoring out, so I have to distribute it to each term up there. Or we can think of dividing each term up top by a negative sign. Either way, what's going to happen is we get negative c squared. Everything's going to be opposite. Positive a squared, positive b squared over boom, 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 2ab. Now, I want this to be alphabetical, so I'm going to do a squared plus b squared and minus c squared over 2ab. And that equals the cosine of c. So when we go back here, we can actually substitute that in for both cosines of c. Let's do that. Wow, look at this. Now, perhaps, for me at least, this is the hardest part. How can you simplify these binomials? What can you do? So go ahead, give it a shot, and then press play, and we'll do it together. OK, so essentially, we have to simplify two things. We have to simplify um, first 1 minus then our term a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. And then we have to also deal with the other one, which is 1 plus that. 1 plus a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. All right, so we're simplifying all of this, and then these are going to be multiplied together, but I'll just leave them separate right now. When you're dealing with fractions and you have to add or subtract them, you want the same denominator, right? So instead of a 1 here, let's just rewrite that as 2ab over itself. So we have that's still equal to 1, assuming a and b are not 0. And it matches the denominator of this fraction, so we can do some addition and subtraction. So let's do this one first. So this is going to be what? That's going to be 2ab minus c minus a squared minus b squared. I'm distributing the subtraction to each piece plus c squared over 2ab. Okay, what is this going to be over here? Pretty similar, 2ab plus a squared plus b squared and then minus c squared all over 2ab. And oh my gosh, this looks terrible, but we can go a little bit further. I've got my A's and my B's. I'm going to kind of group those first. I'm going to think of, it, um, think of this trinomial and this trinomial first. And let's do this one first. Here we have a negative A squared there. I want to factor out a negative 1 and rearrange it. So it's negative 1 times A squared times plus B squared. Oops, let's do, you know what, let's put the AB in the middle. You'll see why in a moment. So fix that, minus 2AB, factoring our negative 1 of each of these terms, and then plus B squared plus C squared, that little term at the end, all over 2AB. Over here, we're going to do the same thing, A squared plus 2AB plus B squared minus C squared all over 2ab. And as we scroll down, you might recognize this, right? Let's look at this one first, right? What is this? This is a, a trinomial that we can factor, isn't it? That would equal, 
we want to do that. So yellow mark. Okay, that would equal what? A plus B squared. And you can test it. A plus B times A plus B will get you A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. I encourage you to test that out. We still have to subtract that t uh, C squared down there. And then we still have a 2AB to work with. That's our term. Over here, what's going to happen? Well, this is, again, this is really close, isn't it? It's just A minus B squared. And please, pause this video if you need to, right? That binomial squared will get you this. Make sure that's working for you. Negative, the opposite of that, plus C squared over 2AB. And that's the second factor. So we've got these two things here, and I just feel inclined. I don't like having a negative sign in the front there. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to kind of swap those two terms. And I'm going to make sure it matches. So it's C squared minus A minus B squared. And over here, uh, I'll, I think I'll leave it for now. So now we can actually go a little bit further. How? In these numerators, we, we have again the difference of two squares. Isn't that remarkable? So finally, we can actually go a little bit further. Can you believe it? Here, we have the difference of squares in both of our numerators. And um, that means that we take the square root of c squared, c, subtract the square root of the second term, a minus b. Take that, multiply it by c plus a minus b. That's all over 2ab. Over here, we're going to get a plus b minus c, and then a plus b plus c, all over 2 times a times b. All right, finally, holy guacamole. Here we get c minus a and then plus b, so c minus a plus b, c plus a minus b, so c minus a plus b times c plus a minus b, a plus b minus c, okay, a plus b minus c, and then a plus b plus c, plus b plus c, and we had 2ab over here and 2ab over there, and we are going to multiply those two. I just wanted to simplify them. Now, I said this proof is beautiful, but it looks like a mess, so hang in there, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so we essentially get something like this, right? This is what we're kind of at right now. What can you simplify with next? So why don't you pause the video and try that, and then press play, and we'll do it together. Okay, so those two ABs, the, both of them, we can multiply that, right? And what do we get? We get 4, 2 times 2 is 4, A squared, B squared. And I'm going to write it over here, essentially factor it, um, over, write the factor over there. Now this is the same thing. Nothing has changed. I just put a multiplication symbol in here because there's so many parentheses. So here it's a fourth times a squared and b squared. And then that is being put over 4a squared b squared, which is the product of these two denominators. So look at this. What's going to cancel? Maybe pause and figure that out. All right, the a squares and b squares cancel, and we're left with 1 16th in the front. And 1 16th times all of this stuff can be written like this. And now you're saying, well, ah, what do I do? Well, I want to start by reordering, because remember what our goal is here. Our goal is to somehow tie in that semi-perimeter. Remember, semi-perimeter is a plus b plus c over what? It's over 2, right? Add up all the sides, divide by 2. So take a moment. Can you reorder this in some way so that the semi-perimeter, this S, is here but in the front? And then semi-perimeter minus A minus B and minus C, is that all in here? Hint, it is. See if you can find it. All right, I'm assuming you've tried it out. First, I notice I've got my A plus B plus C. And I know semi-perimeter adds A, B, and C and divides it by two, so I'm gonna put that in the front. Next, I you know, I here you might not be sure what to do, and it's fine. I would actually just kind of mess around with this one. I want to go alphabetical A, B, C in each case so that um, we are representing the semi-perimeter nicely. 
So I'm going to put that a in the front. It's going to become negative a what? Negative a plus b plus c, right? And then I'm going to keep reordering. I'm going to reorder this one here to a minus b plus c. And the last one, I can leave it alone, a plus b minus c. So I've just kind of shifted things around. And I think the magic really starts to pop up once we see this next step. There's a 16 there, right? But we need twos, right? We need twos. And we have four terms up top. Is there a way to split 16 into twos using four pieces? So before I show it, right, before we show this step, there is a way to split up 16 into twos. And I'll give you a hint. Put one of the twos here under this first term and then keep going. You should have enough twos that make 16 and then start solving for a, right? We have a squared here. We need to get to a. So how do we do that? So try those two steps out. Try splitting up 16 and essentially getting rid of that square. Rewrite it and see what you notice. Look at this. If we square root both sides, that gives us a. But look at this. If you write it like this, 2's in the bottom, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, take the fourth root of 16, essentially, you get those 2's in there, which helps us start to look at semi-perimeter. Look at this. a plus b plus c, there it is, divided by 2, that's s. So we have the first part of our formula. Then we have, we supposed to have s minus a, so what would, what would s minus a equal? Well, semi-perimeter is a plus b plus c over 2. That's s, right, minus a. But a should be over 2, so it's going to be 2a over 2. This is a. 2a is divided by 2 is just a. And now we have the same denominator. a minus 2a is a negative a. And then we have plus b plus c over 2. That is our second term. A negative a plus b plus c over 2 is s minus a. Think about how awesome that is, that we can recognize that. Holy smokes. Do we have s minus b next? Do we have s minus c after that? Test it out. Take a moment. Okay, let's do it together. We have s minus b would be a plus b plus c. That's s over 2. That's s. Minus 2b over 2. That's just b. And then a plus b plus c minus 2b is a minus b plus c over 2. Got it. s minus c is a plus b plus c over 2 minus c. c can be written as 2c over 2, so you have the same denominator. And that's a plus b. And then plus c minus 2c is negative 1c over 2. And that's our last term. I told you this is beautiful. Look at this. We've got a minus b plus c. That's s minus b. And then a plus b minus c over 2. That's s minus c. We have proved Heron's formula. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. hope your mind was slightly blown away. I'll say that. So go back through it. Try this out on your own. Try it from the beginning again yourself. To really appreciate this historical formula and this proof, try it out for yourself. Experience the genius of it on your own. Thanks.